just heard it squealing, 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 then the squealing stopped. Whatever they were attacking, they killed. <laughs> What is good, Grey Gang? We're here. Listen, it is trapping season, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set some traps today. Now, our priority is going to be coons. That is what we're going to be targeting. We have a couple different types of traps. One, we have a dog proof. I'm going to let Bingo film. How you doing, Bingo? He's kind of still asleep. He woke up like three minutes ago. The first trap we're going to be coon trapping with is a live trap. This is probably kind of probably the most popular, but it's pretty simple. You, you put food in the back, and then they walk in, and they get caught. But here's how it really works. So you lift open this door, and you latch the door with this this little bar right here and the bar also connects to a pan back here see a little pan and then back up some bingo and whenever something comes back here steps on it eventually if it works right it'll shut and then you know we can't get out i've had a couple coons somehow break out of this don't ask me how because i ain't figured it out yet but yeah that's the cage trap this is really good if you don't want to kill them or anything you just want to get them out of your face the next kind is good for harvesting coons which means eating them or skinning them or something this is a dog proof now this one's special because of what i just said it's a dog proof meaning it can't catch a dog kind of self-explanatory but the reason it can't catch a dog is because inside there's a little trigger and in order for this trap to go off they have to reach down with their hands grab the trigger and pull up a dog can't do that because they don't have fingers but yeah we just set this trap just like this and then what happens whenever something comes down sticks their hands in it it kind of just uh, clamps down on their hand and holds their hand right here bait of choice for these well i'll tell you that here in a minute let's go all right, Bingo, you ready for this? Let's get it. The trap and the track on wheels have been upgraded to the Defender. Watch out for the chicken. Oh, wrong way. Oh, yep. Okay, we gotta go that way. But yeah, the trap and shack on wheels version two. I don't know, maybe we shouldn't call this a trap and shack on wheels. We used to call the mule the trap and shack on wheels, and then we obviously upgraded to this. So comment down below, guys, what should we name this? Because we don't want to call it the trap and shack on wheels, because the trap and shack on wheels is the mule. So what do we call this? Is it recording? Is it recording? No. I bet. All right, guys, we're in our first location. We're going to set the cage trap first. The bait of choice, a simple can of sardines. Over the past years, I've got a ton of these in fan mail, so that's kind of awesome. Send them on if you want to. P.O. box down in the description. But another really good bait for these, and it's kind of surprising, but also kind of not. Get you a honey bun, open that thing up, throw it in the back. You'll literally have a coon within like 12 minutes. It's kind of crazy. Sardines work pretty good, too, but honestly, I think honey buns almost work more. What do you think, Bingo? Uh, I don't know. You're the professional. That's exactly right. And if you really want to be an overachiever, you can get a bunch of leaves and throw over top of it. But for coons, they do not care at all. We're right here. Now, as for location, mm. oh yeah, that's good stuff. Oh, as for yeah. location, we're kind of in the trees. There's a lot of thick stuff up there, so this is also a really good spot for a possum. I actually caught the world record possum here. You can check that out on my channel. Pretty crazy video. We're gonna stand over here because that stinks really no. bad. No. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, I've never ate them, but like they didn't taste bad up there. Kindle stuff. <laughs> I don't know how people eat those. That's like a whole new level of a man. I mean, I guess if you're hungry, you're hungry. But I'll probably never try to eat them. Maybe we should eat them on the second channel. That'd be I'm fun. not eating them. You can have fun with that. Yeah, we'll just slide that back right there. Set the trap to where if anything wants those, he's going to, have to go in, step on the pan, boom, we catch him. Now let's go on to the dog proof. I, well, I don't know if I'd say they're more effective, but I don't know. They're definitely cheaper. Okay, guys, now we're down here at the dog proof. I've actually already had it set for a day, so like, I don't know. Instead of taking it right back up and resetting it, I'm just going to leave it and show you exactly what's going on. This one down here is actually, believe it or not, was also sent in the fan mail. A guy caught his very first possum in this exact trap. But basically what I got for it is I put some dog food down in the bottom to kind of fill up the tube to about right here. And then I took sardines, put down in the top, and put one like right here. I mean, dog food doesn't really smell that good, but it's really good food for them and keeps them here. But the sardines are really good for scent because they can smell them from a pretty far away. Anyways, guys, now that the traps are set, the only thing we can do or the best thing we can do is just kind of do nothing and just come back tomorrow and see what in the world happens but until then i don't know exactly what we're going to do but we're going to do something that's about the same size as the world record possum we caught that is epic we're putting that right there beside the maple syrup from samuel i'm so horrible with names Merlea. 
Really? Martin? Oh, Ooh. yeah, look at that. That is art. That's 22nd century art, baby. They're going above and beyond the Call of Duty. And we got fan art here. Some of the ancient scrolls are wisdom. Okay, got a big AK. Big AK looks like a Sig something. Bro, the AK's got a stinking drum mag. This one is from Jesse James. Pretty epic name. Jesse James. One master with a knife. Oh, yeah, speaking of the knife, if you want these hoodies, we actually got this new hoodie out. So if you want it, you know where to get it. Kendall Gray, Wonder slash Shop, or first link in description. We got this and Chad the Nomad. Kind of hard to beat. Not gonna lie. Let's see, how do we penetrate this thing? Jesse James got this thing locked up, tired of Fort Knox. Okay, we got some. Ooh, okay, here dog we got some pellets. We got three of them. I mean, three's better than none, I guess. Then we got a dog bone for Steve or Lucky. Oh, that's Lucky. Then we got some BB. Another big bone. That one's for Peanut. And this one's probably for Sheba. Oh, but none for Steve. Poor Steve. Just by looking at that, can you guess what it is? I'm pretty sure I know. Uh, 243. And I'm correct. Oh, here's a knife. We're going to open the next one with this one. And the next one coming from Carter Milstead all the way from Mississippi or Missouri. I don't really know which one this is. No, dude. We got a grenade. That's like a paintball oh grenade. Oh, my gosh. I think it's broken. <laughs> I, think, I think we broke it. We got New Testament. We'll try and make it work, but I don't think it works anymore. <laughs> oh, then we got some hot hands. Probably put them to use tonight. Then we got some targets and a tree. We actually need this. Best thing in the box right there. It's, it's pure. <gasps> I figured out how to use it. So apparently you got to put your thumb on the bottom. Oh. Yeah, sorry guys. It takes me and Kendall a bit to catch on to stuff. For all you guys that have sent mail, thank you for sending mail. If you want to send me some mail to open it up on the second channel, down in the description, somewhere down there is the P.O. box. And as for now, me and Bingo's just going to quit for a little while and come back tomorrow. Hopefully we'll have a coon. I think we do have a pretty good chance. It is the next day out. It is the next day, guys, and we are going to check these traps. Now, as we roll up to the first one, it's looking kind of sketchy. All right, so this is actually one of the traps that we didn't set on camera yesterday. We set it here beside the corn pile because I have a trail camera there. We've seen a couple corn, I mean, we've seen a couple coons here eating the corn. So I decided, you know what, let's put a dog proof right here. The thing is that when it would come up to the dog proof, obviously there's nothing here. But there's a definite trap circle. The trap circle is a thing where like the animal wears it out in like a circle around the trap. And then even looking at this small tree, you can see how there's been something here and it's like destroyed and ripped open the tree trying to get out of the trap. But then like I said, over here in the trap, there's nothing here. And even inside there's like, there's not a foot. So he didn't rip his foot off and I mean there is some fur here But here's the part of the story that I've not told you guys yet this morning I came out here deer hunting because you know it's deer season and I was over there in the field So that's probably 300 yards away. I was just sitting there deer hunting and I heard something do dogs just start squealing start fighting I was like, oh, that's cool a pack of stray dogs. They're killing my neighbor's cat Well, just normal day, you know, and so I was hearing the victim. There's nothing I could do about it I mean at three 300 yards away. What am I gonna do snipe the dogs? I don't know I just heard it squealing 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 then the squealing stopped Whatever they were attacking, they killed. Then all of a sudden, they just killed my coon. It clicked. Son of a struggle. The sardines are gone. There's a bunch of holes going up through here. So, yeah. so they stayed up, snatched my coon, killed it in the trap, and then jerked it out of here. But then I remember seeing whatever's going down down here, and we got a sign of struggle. So we're going to go check it out. Maybe they left it. I don't know. There he is. Oh, yeah. Daggum Jerry, son. They oh, just killed him no. and left him. They did even eat him. They just killed Jerry. They just, for... they just killed him and left him. They just ganged up on Jerry, ripped him out of the trap, and then just slung him around and killed him and watched it for fun. Justice for Jerry. We want to see justice for Jerry, guys. Those those dogs are officially on my no-fly list. Seriously, poor Jerry. He's not even a big coon. Like, generally, sometimes they can get this big. But this is just a small coon. He had no chance. This poor little foot here wasn't even hurt at all. I could have released this guy perfectly fine. He would have had a perfect life. But they just ripped him out of his trap. He killed him. Killed him. He could have had a family, dude. He a did, wife, he did have some a children. The sad part is that with Jerry... We had planned to do one of three things. One, we was going to take him live and help him to train a coon dog. Obviously can't do that anymore. He's dead on hammer. Two, we was going to eat him. Can't do that any longer because he's been dead. They killed him and then they just left him. And now there's flies and ants on him. Three, we was going to skin him up for his fur. We might still do that. But, I mean, if dogs attacked him, they put tooth holes all in him. So now the fur's not worth anything at all. And they ripped open his belly, so that's real nice. I mean, at least if you're going to kill something, use it. I mean, I guess they used him for practice. I was really looking forward to Jerry. I had seen him on trail camera for like two months. Welcome 
to nature. I bet Jerry's dad would have ate them dogs whole. <laughs> Jerry's dad's probably about 300 pounds, six foot two. Built. We're gonna have a little bit of a moment of silence. All right, that's enough. Should we give it a funeral? I think we kind of should give it a funeral. Okay, guys, we're out here today. We've put Jerry in a box, and we're going to send him off. Our original plan was to skin him. However, after further investigation, we have uh, we've came to the conclusion that the dogs have impaled him multiple times. So in memory of Jerry, we decided to put him in a Cheez-It box. It was his favorite late night snack. And this box has no tape on it, so it is 110% biodegradable. We love you, Jerry. Rest in peace. Thank you.